guys it's your girl marcy the future ot so i know it's been a really long time but i have an excuse like a definite excuse an excuse is i finished my field work placement so this was my last field work placement or my requirements for my master's of ot degree i don't know if you guys knew but i technically graduated about may 9th i think sometime that day may 9th it was a virtual graduation so that was pretty interesting and then i still had to finish my requirements um field two replacement um due to covid i was pushed back i was supposed to start april 9th i believe but i ended up starting may 11th so for that i was in a subacute setting um sniff slash long-term care facility excuse the noise there's garbage trucks outside but anyway, so I just finished last Friday, July 31st. I actually finished a week before my birthday, so I was pretty excited for that. But I do have plans to take the boards in the next 8 to 10 weeks, so I'm pretty excited about that. This week, I haven't been studying as much um, because I've been trying to take a little break because I needed that break. But, you know, it feels good that I finally finished. So... I know you guys may have some questions, so if you guys have questions about field work too, um, comment down below and I'll be sure to try and answer them as quickly as possible now that I have a little bit of free time. But let's talk about my field work two experience. So I had my first experience as um, a pediatric setting in a school district. I didn't really like the commute. I had to commute 45 minutes there and back every day, Monday through Friday, which sucked because there was a lot of toll there and back. And I had to fill up my gas tank like twice a week, so that wasn't cheap. Um, and they say during field work that they don't advise you to work because you have to focus on um, either the students that you're seeing, your patients, or some people may call your clients. So, I would say I thought that I wanted to go into peds, like I really loved before I started my placement, you know, working with the kids and stuff, but I feel like as I experienced that for three months straight, um, I don't think that was my niche. I don't think that's something that I would enjoy doing full time, like it was a good experience, but I just feel like it was really repetitive. I mean, the subacute sending was a repetitive too, but I feel like with the kids, I didn't really get to bond with them as I thought. Um, the grades that I worked with was kindergarten. I did go to preschool for about a day. That was interesting. The kids were so small. Like, it was so different working with, like, three-year-old and four-year-olds. They screamed. You get to play literally all day, but they literally screamed and cried. I didn't even know what to do. Like, we played with toys and stuff to work on, like, you know, fine motor skills, um, gross motor skills, but it was a lot of running around after them, too, which I don't think I enjoyed. Um, and then in the middle school, I work with sixth to eighth graders, that was okay. I just feel like it was really redundant as far as like um, visual perceptual skills, visual motor skills. There was a lot of evaluations and I feel like in the school setting you have to take a lot of the work home with you as an occupational therapist because you don't get to finish everything you have to do in that one day. So there was a lot of evaluations. Um, the most common evaluations, if you guys don't know, um, the BOT2 which has a lot of um, gross motor skills, um, fine motor skills. BOT2, we did we did an assessment, a writing assessment, I can't think of it right now. And then we did a lot of the VMI, um, Barry VMI, so that had a lot to do with visual perception, perceptual and um, motor skills, fine motor, things like that. So that was pretty interesting. Um, then there was a lot of evals, so for both of my experiences, my CIs were both really great and I was fortunate that I had really good um, professors or not even just professors. One of them from my sub center, he actually was a professor. The other one, she was not, but she worked in a lot of different settings and she knew a lot as far as like sensory integration. Um, she focused a lot on that. She even had like a sensory kind of room in her classroom so that was pretty cool when I left 
before COVID started, we got in the materials to try and introduce that, but then COVID hit and school was out for two weeks. So, I would say that, you know, my first placement was more of the traditional placement, and then COVID hit really hard, and then I had to finish my last two weeks at home, which I was grateful for. So, I was able to, um, you know, Google hang out with her and you know do a lot of my treatments online I created this website for the school district because she was into gardening making a sensory garden so I helped her create that from scratch so that was pretty interesting um what else did we do we would do a lot of IEP meetings um and that's usually when students are either being referred for you know trouble that may they may be having in their classes and that will lead to an evaluation and then after the evaluation will come the results of what they're lacking and then the OT, the social worker, um, the aide, the teacher will all have a meeting with the parents and set aside some guidelines or things that they may have to set aside to have for their child in the classroom, in class support or out, class, out of class support, it just depends on what the child needs to work on so I definitely feel like that experience was great I always said that I want to work in a school setting another pro about the school setting that I would say is that the hours so the hours that I did was I had to be there at 7 30 and I got out at 2 30 and since my CI was a mom and that was really great because she needed to be out by 2.30. 2.30 came, she was like, all right, we got to go. Like, whatever we don't finish, we can come back tomorrow and do, or I can just take it home. So that was really nice. Um, so that was a great experience. And then I started my subacute setting a couple months later. Because I end March, first started in April, but I didn't start till May. Unfortunately, I didn't start because my CA actually had COVID, so he was out for three weeks. But I was just grateful that he was able to still take me in after he went through that. And the facility at the time, COVID was going up. Like, I was so scared. Like, I literally kept on looking up the rates and how many people were getting COVID at the facility. And literally, when I first emailed him, he said there was zero. And then when I looked, it went up to like 20, then it went to 30, then it went to 50 by the time I started. I'm like, what? I was like, what the heck am I getting into? And I was so scared at the time because my mom works in the ER. So she had a lot of COVID all around her. And she, I know her mental health. I was so scared because I was in the house with her. And I would be freaking out because I didn't know. Like, I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't... She's already exposed. I don't want to get exposed. And then it would just be a whole mess at home. But, you know, I'm grateful that she was able to stay safe. And she had a lot of PPE. And I'm grateful for her because when I tell you my mom was the VIP, still is, for hooking me up with that PPE, every week she would stack up N95 masks. She got me the scrub. She got me the, the face shield, the goggles all that because she needed me to stay safe and I even like got a bunch of N95 masks like I was on eBay ordering stuff just to make sure that I was safe and luckily the facility that I went to um they actually had N95 masks for the students um and I went to the COVID unit once and he said basically my CI said that I didn't have to go in the COVID unit I would he would treat COVID and I would treat patients so that was pretty cool. He was pretty understanding, and I liked how he, like, you know, looked out for his students and their well-being and stuff. So I have a little more to say about the sub-acute um, portion because that was something I really enjoyed, and I feel like I gained a lot of experience as well. So remember I said that I thought I would want it to be in peds? It turned out to be the opposite for adults. Like, I just feel like... I connected with the adults way more like and I noticed that every time because some of the adults the second floor they would be there for I wouldn't say like a long time they mm, I would say they'll be there for like over six weeks and then the third floor are the long term long term patients so they live there so I was with these patients for maybe like four to six weeks before they were discharged depending on their health insurance either it was Medicaid a um or Medicare or commercial insurances. If you guys want me to make a separate video about that, um, 
that comes into play whether the insurance company wants to keep them or not, whether they want to get discharged, um, whether they're making progress or they don't see progress. A lot of these patients honestly would get get the boot like they will get kicked out they don't some of the insurance companies depending on what they have if they don't see any progress or they feel like they've been there for too long they don't have no problem in cutting you off like it was crazy so I felt like well, a lot of these patients I got so attached to like it was so sad like I had two patients that actually passed away during um, treatment which was sad I had one last week and then I had one the weekend of 4th of July so that was really sad um I don't know like Dealing with death in the past hasn't been something that, you know, that I took very well. And, I don't know, it was, it's just different working with adults. Like, death hits you really different. Like, personally, I know for a fact that being in this facility or seeing other facilities, I know that I personally would not want my parents, no matter how old they get, to get in a facility. I would rather have them at home if I can afford it and have people come to the house and help take care of them along with myself and my you know siblings because it's just really sad and it's really stressful but um yeah so that was you know that was really sad but other than that like I connected with a lot of my patients like and I just love seeing my patients improve like there's this one patient oh my gosh she was such a sweetie pie like I'm so happy because she's getting discharged to go home she should be home now, I think. Or she's in the hospital and she's about to go home. But basically, she had COVID. Um, she recovered from COVID, came to our facility, and then my CI ended up doing the evaluation, and then I ended up taking over. By the way, before I forget, leaving the facility of being there for three months, I did 72 evaluations. 72 evaluations I did. Literally, it was back to back to back. Every time a patient came in, I think my second or third week, I started doing evaluations. My CI was like, all right, you take over. Literally, I would be doing evaluations like this, like this, like this. It was crazy. And when I first started, I was like, what the hell am I getting myself into? Like seeing there we um the software that we used was optima and um is it optima or optima i think it's optima and then we use point click clear and you might you guys might see this in your um one of your classes like one of my um adult classes we you know we briefed on it a little bit but it's basically like you put in on the goals you put in like all their personal information um their diagnoses and stuff and I was like my first week like what the hell am I getting myself to like it was I had a migraine like of all the different buttons we had to press all the different codes like I was like I don't know how I'm gonna do this and my CEO was like don't worry like you'll do you'll be able to like get into it and stuff and do it on your own and then honestly I figured it out so it wasn't as bad as I thought it would have been but yeah so like i was saying that was i don't know that was, i lost my train of thought but i had this one patient that had covid and she had a trach a tracheotomy so she had a trach and a lot of times i didn't realize in a sniff that like, there was a lot of things that i didn't think i would see like a trick that scared me like seeing a live tracheotomy in front of me like her being attached to a o2 to her neck that kind of scared me because when we did transfers and stuff, like, I, you know, that's a lot of things they don't teach you in school. Like, they talk about, like, wires and tubes and stuff, but when you're in real person, when you're in real life, you got to deal with the whole human being, that's different because your CI is licensed on the line, you're not trying to fail your own your own patient you're not trying to fail your field work you're not trying to first of all, when you start field work, do not drop your patient. I don't care what nobody says, do not drop your patient. Do not drop your patient. That's not automatically fail. If you need help, if you need help, get an aid to help you. That's all I have to say. If you need help, get an aid to help you. Rehab aid or try to find a CNA to help you transfer. There's a lot of times that I needed an aid to help me because they, they were in a bigger weight class and I couldn't lift them by myself. Or there's just other responsibilities that I need to take care of. So that was interesting. But, um yeah so um i worked with that patient until i left and her transfers were max and then eventually we got her to you know supervise she went to contact her then she went to supervise and then she became modified independent 
and I was so happy like seeing her progress because I would work with her like almost every day um, we worked on dressing transfers um, upper body lower body dressing toilet and transfers then we did tub transfers bed transfer like I became really close with her and then eventually sometimes depending on you know sometimes with the insurance you know another insurance picks up if that insurance isn't able to cover you anymore you have to be reevaluated so I did her reevaluation and then eventually I didn't have her on my caseload anymore but like I saw her around in the gym and stuff and she improved a lot so that made me very happy seeing patients improve oh my gosh I don't know I, I just get so happy and like so teary eyed like and if it wasn't for COVID I would give these people hugs but you know COVID is a big thing so that was a thing hygiene being hygienic is really 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 important especially like making sure you wash your hands if you're not able to wash your hands make sure you use hand sanitizer like i would wipe everything down all my equipment down that i would carry with me i will wash my hands hand sanitize my hands make sure i'm not touching my face if i need to wipe something in my face i would use um, my scrub or my elbow like i always wore double masks so i wore n95 mask and then a surgical mask on top of it um depending on your school you might have assignments um link to your fieldwork so for me I have to do journals this time I only had to do about four journals so once the fourth week one for the sixth week one for the first week I believe and then one for my last week um, and then your six week mark is your midterm so they give you your midterm grade I believe you have to have over 90 and then um, your final grade I think you have to have over a 120 or something but I had like a really high grade I did higher than the last time. I did good the first time, but I did way better on this time. I felt so comfortable. And even my CI said, like, I see that you became, like, you, you were becoming your own of how you... Because at first, you're going to, like, copy the method of your CI because you don't know where to start. And then you start to find your own rhythm. So I felt like I did. So, I don't know. I did it. I'm so happy. So that means I get my degree in the mail soon and I got my emails that, you know, my grade went through us passing. So I'm grateful for that. And then the next step is studying for my boards. That's the next goal I'm trying to tackle. I'm not going to say when I'm taking my boards exactly, but, you know, I'm working on that. Um, I do not like taking tests, so I'm only trying to take this once. But if I, if, if I don't pass the first time, then I don't pass. I'll take it again. Like, it's not a big deal. So, I just want to let you guys know and give you guys an update. So, I want you to like, comment, subscribe. And I just want to bring this video to you guys to give you guys a quick update. It's your girl, Marcy, the future OT. Bye, guys.